Mm. It's already raining outside. Mm. Let's just read another story. About Nairobi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> at least it's at least it's about Nairobi. It's not, it can't be bad. <laughs> Chaos! Ah. <laughs> the state so you read the headline. Ndionasoma. Chaos. Ah. The state of Sakaja's Nairobi City. Ah. Johnson Sakaja rode to power on the uh, back of a pledge to transform the most important city in East Africa. But many of Nairobi's residents now think he's all dimples. Well, he is. And no plan. <clears throat> huh? This is a problem. It goes into a story of a little girl and what she expected when she saw Nairobi mm. and what was supposed to happen mm. in an episode last week. And it just goes on and on. Um, it's getting to the heart of the matter when folks are complaining about what Nairobi looks like. Mm. On every road that you see, there was traffic. There was hit and miss with border borders riding on the wrong side of the road. Mm. Nowhere is the damage they are causing to the city infrastructure more evident than on the median of the Kenyatta Avenue between the junction with Ngong Road and the roundabout to the Huru Highway. Here and every day, thousands of them ride on the median and have pounded the tarmac to smithereens. And it goes on and on. It also talks about there being a zoning disaster that has made downtown Nairobi lose its luster and in fact many motorists avoid driving in the section between Moy Avenue and Kirinyaga Road. There have been attempts to correct the mistake but those often end up being swallowed by the populist agenda of politicians. Um, so it goes on and talks about Nairobi's problems, it goes on to talk about the hawkers etc etc. Now um Johnson Sakaja, who we know to be the governor of Nairobi, in his address agreed that Nairobi deserves better and promised to make life more dignified for residents. He said, we grew up in a city that was orderly, in which there was community because neighbors knew each other and cared for each other and it cared for each other's families and in which public services worked. The quality of municipal governance made our family life possible. Nairobians want a city of order, of dignity, of hope and of opportunity. A city where everyone knows and obeys the rules, where, there is, where no one is subjected to indignity and humiliation. This is the county I want, he says. Mm. That is the county that all the leaders mm. gathered here want. As leaders, we are responsible for achieving it. 2050 is the year, he said, and he said Nairobi will have at least 10.5 million inhabitants. And so to avoid urban sprawl and its negative effects, we must rethink and redesign many of our neighborhoods. So it seemed to be an aspirational state of the county address, mm. taking into consideration all these things which are going wrong. Garbage, complete madness, flooding everywhere, crazy, hawkers all over the city, border border operators doing what they like, city county Ascaris just wanton, you know, everything upside down. But he said, we are working on it. We are going to fix it. <coughs> okay, so as he was delivering that the state of the county address, um, this is his second, right? Mm. The question is, do the residents of Nairobi, or even visitors to Nairobi, feel that the government is actualizing a plan? No. Very because that will be it. You know, um, we interviewed Sakaja a number of times mm. during his campaign, and he was saying his campaign slogan was "Let's make Nairobi work." Lazima work. After he became elected, he said "Lazima work." That's mm. now the current. Uh, mm. So, and and among the number of things that he promised, number one, let's bring order to the to the city. Mm. Let's bring order in terms of just how you apply for licenses and you deal with the the the, the, the county enforcement agencies. There have been so many complaints about county enforcement officers. Um, let's bring order into the city. Let's have a place where people feel that they are part and parcel of the governance of their city. And that's why he had even talked about dividing Nairobi into small administrative units called boroughs and whatever, you know, and the move towards that. What do people feel? What do people feel? Let me ask you a question. When mm. is the last time you were downtown? Let's just take downtown Nairobi. Why is downtown? Example. Moy Avenue, let's say Moy Avenue, all the way from railways to the junction that then goes towards University of Nairobi Central Police Station. It is bustling with activity. Oh my God. It's busy. Mm -hmm. it's, it it's, it's a busy city. Chaos. There are, hey, there are people everywhere, garbage. People have set up their businesses, people selling lemons and ginger on the side of the road everywhere, just aggregate. Have you tried to walk between railways and that junction that I'm talking about? Mm. 
Girls. My friend, I, I said it can never be me again. What? I was traumatized. What time was it? At about f about 1 30, 2 o'clock. In the middle of the day. It's just so, so you you've got you've got small scale traders, let's call them that. Okay, let's call them who that. have uh, paraded their wares on the pavement of the road. Yes. Right? You see, the, so from the junction, all I remember is that the Gertrude Children's Hospital bus mm -hmm. used to park right there at uh, the, uh, the August 7th Memorial Corner, mm. right? From there, mm. whereby there used to be a retail supermarket, I believe mm. it was Tuskies, mm. along the side of the road. People have put, on the other side now, on the other, I can't remember the name of that building, people are there selling clothes, selling what, just... So there's no space for pedestrians to walk? Walk what? This is it. There's no space for pedestrians to walk. No, it's just packed. Then I think it's it's a Kenya cinema. Mm. People there, there are stalls there. People have set up. They're just then there's some space because then there's the Kenya Commercial Bank headquarters. Mm. So obviously you're not putting anything there. Mm. And then of course then you go where the Hilton was is the building is still there. Of course, mm. then you now cross over to Union Towers mm. where now people have set up now the, the why it was for me ginger and lemons mm. specifically in my head because that's what you is, saw is what I saw. And then another guy came with his cart. I don't know selling what knock down the lemons and ginger Aye! that's why i remember mess 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 Where? Where? okay when will you clean it up it's chaos okay and you want to do city tours city walks okay okay so this is the state of nairobi mm. as it is today lemons and ginger up in the air I think the bigger part is when people don't feel like there's uh, progress towards bringing that order in place. Mm -mm. Because actually, I, I think we can have, and he had even talked about it in, in, in his campaign, Sakaja, mm. you can block off some streets at certain hours of certain days so that you allow this open market, street markets to, to come in and thrive. But it should be orderly. There is a way it can happen and for all of these other things to go on in the city without any kind of disruption. Mm. There's not the, there are many cities around the world. I think about cities like Paris and mm. Berlin. You have street markets every day. Yeah. Street markets, they're there. People are cooking, selling their wares. Mm. But there is order. It's possible to <laughs> do. It's possible. Aye. Mungus idea. Tafavali. Mungus idea. Spice.